Hi, it's Diane. I'm coming to you from a new studio space. This is located in Crockett, California. I have um, moved my operations from Benicia, where I have a very large studio, to Crockett. This is a, a beautiful space. It's a little cozier, a little more comfortable. And I've kept the Benicia Studio strictly for workshops. So you can find out about those workshops at uh, www.iniworkshops.com. I'll always post the latest uh, workshop offerings. So um, today we're going to talk about cold wax. I've been concentrating on cold wax for several months. I took a workshop in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico with Rebecca Kroll and Jerry McLaughlin, who are the queen and king of the medium. It's a, it's a, a quite a complex medium to work with. And uh, I'm not gonna lie, I've been struggling quite a bit. I, I like a lot of the work I've done, but it's, it's quite tedious compared to the very physical, freeing uh, mixed media that I like to splash the paint around and it's not like that. It's thin veils of paint that are scraped on with scrapers and brayers. It's, it's a whole different story. But I'm going to show you a little bit about what I'm doing and uh, invite you on that journey with me. Okay? See you in the studio. I've been working on this piece for about four days. The surface is really getting quite beautiful, although the composition isn't there yet. A lot of times um, the composition will reveal itself after you've been working for a long time. The thing about cold wax is you have all the concerns of your composition, your palette, all the uh, light, uh, temperature, all the concerns that we have with every other kind of painting. But we add an extra concern into it, and that is the texture. You want to get a very interesting texture in your cold wax, and that's the beauty of the medium. At this point, it's what Jerry McLaughlin always says, it's a hot mess, and don't worry about that. The thing about the cold wax is we're putting down layer after layer after layer, and a lot of the under layers come through, revealing very, very interesting patterns, colors, textures. So at this stage, I'm hoping that I can find a bit of a composition. Um, I see a diagonal here and here, which is quite beautiful, I'm wondering what I need to block out to, to get this where it needs to be. There's too much stuff. And what's, what's the composition going to be? So, <clears throat> cold wax. This is Gamblin cold wax. It's beeswax, and it's mixed with various resins. It's, it has the consistency of Crisco, actually. And you don't add any heat. This is all done straight out of the can. And I'm gonna blend this with oil paint. 50% cold wax, 50% oil. generally applied with scrapers and palette knife and then there's various ways that we get textures to it. So looking at this composition today the first thing I want to do is quiet it down quite a bit. I take a big glob of the cold wax and I put it on the side of the palette that way, when I want to mix it with colors, I don't have to keep getting in and out of the can. I like to turn my compositions a lot to get different perspective about, about them. 
I, I like this top part. Hmm. Let's see if we can make it work. I'm going to quiet this down first of all. And I'm going to do that with some white. I'll start with the titanium white. And I'll probably mix a little uh, gold ochre into that to soften the white a bit and give it a warmer tone. So you can see with all the texture that I have on here, when I go over it to quiet it down, I'm left with some interesting texture. Cold wax is a medium that we work into wet into wet. So you can work all day and still uh, not be able to get the paint too muddy. Um, we sort of have the ability to go over it with veils of other colors, um, scraping back into it. It's, it's, it's really pretty interesting. Let's see. Let's see what happens. I just kind of get, I get a little brutal with quieting it down. Can you see that texture? This is a medium that can really seduce you because of how sexy it is. It's um, soft and it's a lot of surprises that come through when you're working in this medium. So once you get a couple of things down, it's really fun to scrape back into it. Give it some motion. Give it some, give it some, some interest. what's underneath what I just put on and then these scratches aren't real interesting but I like to soften them keep some get rid of some so that the only ones I have left are ones that I really want that's pretty interesting so far now, let's see, I'm going to go back this way for a minute. wondering to myself, where is the composition? Where's the forms that I want to bring out? They seem to be two, going in two separate directions. So You can create form by blocking out with the paint. I block out some of the red and with white and I turn it into a form, like a long branch-like form that's fairly interesting, maybe not quite as interesting as I had hoped. But there's certainly some something going on here that I like. I want to possibly get rid of some of the black. I can always put it back in. So it's definitely getting quieter. 
and I'm liking this composition a little better than when we started. It's certainly going to need some tweaking and adjusting and see if I can get it to be something very dynamic, simple, with a strong impact. I have a second piece that I've been working on with this, hoping that I might get a diptych. Let me bring the other piece over. This piece is a little more developed. And just want to get an idea. It actually looks pretty interesting together as a diptych. I think I may work this as a diptych. So let's see what we can get. And um, this is a good stopping point. It's a medium that you really have to take your time with. Don't rush it. Plan on being with the pieces for four, five, six days each. Just enjoy the process. It's very meditative. It's kind of a, a Zen process. And uh, I'll see you soon. We'll see what uh, we'll see what becomes of this crazy mess. And uh, I'll show the end result to you when I'm done. So remember, painting's a practice, and practice makes perfect. Trust in the process, um, and I'll see you next time, okay? Go to your studio. Bye.